Welcome, everybody. Thanks for joining today. My name is Eileen. Uh, we're just going to give folks another minute or two to get logged on, and then we will start. All right. Hi, everybody. Thank you for joining. And thanks for sending such nice welcome message in the chat there, too. It's great to see everybody. Um, if you'd like, feel free to share, too, um, where you're tuning in from, just to get an idea of all of our attendees joining today. Um, so thank you all for being here and taking the time to learn more about the Leaders for Global Operations LGO program. A look at that. Some locations are coming through all over the place from right in the Boston area to all around the world. That's fantastic. Well, thank you all. So my name is Eileen. I work on the admissions team for the LGO program. Um, I'm joined by some wonderful colleagues, Sharona Bollinger, also on the LGO admissions team, and Alexis Marcus um, on our Sloan admissions team too. So I'm um, really excited to be here. We um, are gonna be giving a general overview about the LGO program, talking about focusing on some of the more unique aspects of this dual degree program. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about the application components and next steps, and then we'll open it up for a Q&A from all of you. So please feel free as we're going through and discussing the program to submit any questions in the Q&A uh, box at the bottom of your screen there. And we'll try to get to as many as possible. Definitely ask if you can um, keep any specific questions to your circumstances, um, maybe reach out to us individually and we can help guide through some of those um, concerns or questions you have at lgo at mit.edu. And our email address will also be posted a little bit later on one of the slides too. So, all right, that being said, why don't we jump right in? Okay, great. So um, wanted to first talk a little bit about the program from sort of a, a, a snapshot view. Sorry, so as you can see, um, the LGO program is sort of a, a combination of different people in, uh, who are involved. And it's a dual degree program in which you get both your master's, your MS in engineering, um, as well as your MBA from the Sloan School of Management. It's a fully integrated program at MIT um, that you know, helps you hone your technical skills to solve problems in operations and technology, but you also gain the tools to become an innovative leader and, and make direct impact within whichever industry you go into. Um, a lot of people who are joining and, and graduating from the LGO program work in technology, manufacturing, and operations, um, but there's a lot of variety. It's a very versatile degree that allows you to pivot into other areas around that too. Um, the program was started 35 years ago, so it's a pretty established dual degree program. Its roots were in the manufacturing um, areas and you know, thinking of operations from concept through production, delivery, and service. Um, with that strong application of analytical tools, which has evolved over time um, with focuses on sustainability and machine learning, for example. So it's, um, it's an evolving program and growing based on the needs that people see in these different industries, as well as the interests of our students. Um, it's a wonderful collaboration, as I mentioned, through the School of Engineering and the Sloan School of Management, and also through our corporate partners at Blue Circle there that you can see, um, which I'm going to spend a little bit more time discussing in a moment. Um, they play a pretty significant part of the, uh, the experience for our LGO students. But um, 
again, generally speaking, the program enrolls a class of about 50 to 55 students each year. Um, and candidates who are interested in this program have generally an average of around five years of work experience, but that middle 80% range is, it varies from like two to 10 years of work experience. Um, it's ideal for candidates who have some sort of STEM background, um, ready to lead, again, strategic innovation in a variety of industries. So um, a few other aspects that you may see on the screen are um, a required thesis component during a research-based internship, which I'll talk about in more detail. Um, and so from there, I'm gonna pivot and we'll talk a little bit more about the partner companies and how they play a role with LGO. Here is a snapshot of the different partner companies who work with us. We have uh, 25 at the moment. These are their little logos here. Um, some of the more recent additions in the past couple of months um, include Symbotic, and Blue Origin, which is exciting um, to see that, you know, we're always looking for new partner companies who are interested in working with our LGO students and always looking for, um, based on student feedback of partner companies that uh, they'd be interested in learning from and potentially working for someday. So the partner companies really help make our program possible by significantly funding the program, um, which makes it possible to provide on average close to 60% tuition coverage for every admitted candidate um, who is not sponsored. So um, if you're not a sponsored student, you can expect to have an average tuition um, fellowship award that covers about 60%. Um, and we have additional fellowship awards on top of that too that candidates are considered for, but it's a good baseline to keep in mind when you're thinking about um, this option. Um, in addition to the fellowship awards, the partner companies provide guaranteed research internships for all of our LGO students. So this is another really unique part of the program. Um, each student actually, they are required to complete this six month research-based internship at one of our partner companies. Um, it's a little bit different if, if you're comparing it to a traditional MBA internship in that um, it is more of a, considered a, of a class almost because it's for academic credits. Um, and so these academic credits are to be completed over the duration of two semesters, so about six months, um, which allows more time for students to immerse in the company and, and not just learn about the company, but get projects up and running and really see some impact while they're um, there, which is nice. Um, and so in addition to the fellowship, the internship, there's also a lot of exclusive networking opportunities that LGO students can benefit from in getting to know these partner companies, um, different workshops and, and getting to know different leaders and many LGO alumni who work at these places um, to help um, in learning about different opportunities and, and just definitely expanding your network um, beyond our you know, 1400 plus alumni and, and student body within um, LGO Sloan and School of Engineering. So um, if, if you're interested too in thinking about how these partners play an impact post LGO, um, usually it's around 50% of our LGO graduates who end up working at one of these partner companies. Um, there's not a requirement or anything to do so, it just sort of happens naturally um, from, you know, spending time with these companies, the internship process. So um, something to think about too. So let's talk a little bit more about this very unique research-based internship option. Um, as you can see on the slide, there are two rounds, um, two times that students can take their internship. So um, the, in February, the Feb starts, as we say, or the June starts. And the majority of LGO students will um, start in the, the June after they've started. So the second year, um, the second summer of their programming. Um, but it, does, it really depends on what engineering department you're in, the types of projects that are available and that you're interested in pursuing, as well as the classes that you wanna make sure you're on campus to take. So you work really closely with your academic advisors um, to sort of navigate the right, the right timing for you to pursue your internship. And I should have mentioned this earlier, what's nice too, is that you not only have the resources in navigating these classes and decisions from, um, from the communities at Sloan and the School of Engineering, but we have a dedicated LGO staff and academic advisors to help um, with everything really, but definitely about your internship timing and, and your classwork too. Um, the research-based thesis is really, um, the foundation of what will become the, the research that you develop for your thesis. Um, and so if, you know, our goal for each of these research internships is that um, there's educational discovery for the students and impact on the company. So um, that's something to think about too, is, you know, 
it's this is your biggest source if you want some hands on um, analytical um, application and research um, within the master's component of your LGO experience. Um, you know, to do a thesis re research project, the minimum amount of time for that master's level research is really about six months. Um, so that's why that, you know, you're receiving that academic credit for the thesis. It's part of the academic structure of the LGO program. Um, and these pictures are actually another element of the experience of working with our partner companies, not just within the internship, but also um, another part of the program that's built in called the domestic plant track or DPT, as we call it. Um, a lot of alumni and students continually cite this as a highlight of their experience in LGO. Um, students get to observe operations in practice, really, and also connect with executives at um, all of the different LGO partner companies by traveling across the country for a couple of weeks um, while partner companies showcase their operations to, um, to the students who become potential interns and maybe recruits down the road. Um, and at each of these stops, LGO alumni usually help to facilitate site visits at their companies, um, different manufacturing facilities, and arrange uh, local alumni meetings for students too. So um, it's a wonderful opportunity to get to know the companies really on, on an exclusive level, um, as well as bonding with your classmates too. So um, a really neat opportunity that is a, another aspect beyond just the internship that students can be involved in. Um, so I wanted to talk a little bit about the curriculum. You might be thinking to yourself, how do I mix all of the master's MBA and LGO coursework into two years? Um, and it does seem a little daunting at first when you think about it, but it is possible with planning and a lot of support that you're going to receive throughout those two years. This is just a snapshot of um, the first, year, first two semesters to think about how things are integrated. Um, we do have a full sample curriculum and program timeline on our website on the academics page. Um, but as you can see by the color coding, each color represents engineering, LGO and Sloan classes. And you do take a mix of different focuses during each semester. Um, the summer is another unique component of LGO in that it's, it's just the LGO summer course. So all of the students in LGO start in June. Um, and then they take you know, special classes just as that cohort of 50 to 55 students to really get to know each other, um, sort of get a baseline. And then in the fall semester, LGO students join their fellow um, MBA classmates in the MBA core. Um, they're placed on Sloan core teams. Everyone is integrated. Um, and they also begin taking some of their engineering classes during the fall semester. Um, one other thing I wanted to note too, and there's a lot of different resources online about the action learning opportunities. Um, this is a great component of um, primarily offered through you know, the Sloan School of um, not a, more hands-on experience through the electives that are available. And so, um, you know, LGOs can, they take one product design course, which, which is often working with a startup or a different company or a new product. Um, and the design course, you know, it usually is focused on a manufacturing project, architecture, something that needs prototyping or simulation. Um, but as a Sloan student, you also have the ability to take action learning labs to gain more hands-on experience. Um, it usually starts in a lecture session Setting, then working remotely and on site with different host organizations to solve real business challenges. Um, it's, uh, some popular ones for LGOs that they've taken in the past include the analytics lab, um, the global entrepreneurship lab, but happy to talk more about those too if, if people have specific questions. Um, we also get a lot of questions about like, what are the actual classes that you take when you're a student in LGO? What does it really look like um, day in the life. And I'll give you another example um, of a snapshot here just for a second to get an idea of what this looks like for your first year of the LGO program. The left column is the listing of the different MBA classes you'd be taking and the right column is your engineering classes for. Um, this is a sample of a, you know, an LGO student who um, is in the civil environmental engineering, that June start option. So um, if you have questions too about what kind of classes would you be taking if you were a student in X department, um, please send us an email. We'd be happy to talk through those and, and share more depending on what your interests are. So 
wanted to share the class profile information um, of the class of 2023, and we'll be posting the most recent um, information for the LGO class of 2024, who is just enrolled uh, within the next few weeks. But this is just to give you an idea of where our students are coming from academically, um, as well as the industry backgrounds that they bring. Um, as I mentioned, they have about five years of work experience um, academically around uh, you know, 3.7 average GPA. One of the benefits too um, of having a smaller cohort within LGO um, is to really be able to impact their experience within the program. And so um, what I mean by that is LGO has a group of different student committees who are involved in um, every aspect of shaping the program from um, alumni relations, the DPT, um, academics, admissions, um, active allyship focused around diversity initiatives. So um, students can really take on leadership roles and help shape um, the type of coursework that's offered, the type of lectures that are given and who's giving them um, for guest, guest lectures. Um, so there's a lot of different ways to impact within this smaller group in the community that you're in. One of the aspects I wanted to point out too is around um, the focus on diversity, equity, and inclusion that's been growing in the past couple of years for the LGO community. Um, we've made some, some significant changes, obviously still have a lot of work ahead of us, but wanted to highlight a few aspects of um, what the students, alumni, and LGO community has been working on to increase the um, community diversity within LGO. So um, one of these things that's available in the past couple of years is the Diversity Fellowship Award. Um, there are five of these offered each year, as you can see based on the characteristics described on the slide. Um, which are full fellowship awards that, that we offer. Um, another great organization I mentioned is the Active Allyship Student Committee, which was formed by some of our students graduating this year from the class of 2022 um, with a list of different goals. And I've listed a few here just as examples um, around increasing the diversity of our marketing efforts on the admissions end to also um, developing new case studies that feature more diverse protagonists. And there are some more examples um, on our website if you want to learn more about some of these goals, but this has been a huge um, focus with our team and our community lately, um, not just on the student side, but on the alumni side too. There's a few I've also listed the underrepresented minority or you know, BIPOC alumni group, which is focusing on helping to increase the diversity of our community of students um, and the women of LGO to help recruit more women candidates. And both of these organizations work really closely with our teams in engaging with prospective students and admitted students, um, offering a lot of different mentorship opportunities and, and ways to connect one-on-one. -on -one. So um, this is just a snapshot too of the diversity resources at LGO. This is not including a huge number of resources and affinity groups that our students participate in through Sloan and the greater MIT community. So if you're interested in learning more about these um, additional opportunities, more information can be on our website, as I mentioned, um, in, on the student life section. Okay, so we're gonna talk a little bit, shifting gears about the application process. And um, as you can see, coming soon to you um, is are the dates. Uh, they are not yet specific, but you can anticipate a similar timeline to what has been in the past. So round one will be late September, early October. Around two is an early December application deadline. Um, round, and so th thinking about that, um, it's important to uh, think about a few of the logistics. So um, sometimes we get questions about whether or not it's uh, a matter of applying with multiple applications. And the answer to that is no, you submit one application to the program, which we hope makes it more convenient. <laughs> um, and that application is read by the LGO admissions team, as well as Sloan and whichever school of engineering department you're applying to. So um, that's important to keep in mind as well. Um, you are really encouraged to submit your application whenever you feel you can submit your strongest you know, overall presentation of yourself and readiness. So um, we would hate to see candidates jeopardize the quality of their application just to meet the round one deadline. Um, same review process in both rounds. In fact, what's also kind of unique about this dual degree program is um, a lot of students who apply in round one are waitlisted 
and then um, receive their final decision in round two. It's a preference that many of our engineering departments have of um, reviewing the entire application pool before they make their final decision. So while we do have some decisions that um, obviously go out in round one, um, if you are an applicant who applies in round one and are waitlisted, um, don't be discouraged because that does happen to the majority of our students for many of our departments. Um, so that's just something to keep in mind as well. One other thing I wanted to note here too, um, sometimes candidates ask if they have to submit a separate application to be considered for um, LGO fellowship or other um, scholarship opportunities. The answer to that is no. Um, candidates are automatically you know, reviewed for admission, um, being reviewed for any and all potential um, financial awards. And when candidates receive their admissions decision, they're also going to be receiving information about any uh, fellowship awards that they get all at the same time. So we're gonna talk a little bit about the application components. Um, keep in mind, we'll have a different webinar um, coming down the road that will take a much deeper dive into these different areas. Um, so this is just a, a quick list of the different application components. We try to keep it as lean as possible while also um, ensuring that you know, the interests um, of both the Sloan School of Management and each engineering departments are met to make sure students are going to be successful in the program um, and handle the rigors of the academics as well. Um, so you know, there is an online application that students submit asking for general academic and professional information. Um, a one-page resume is also required. Um, I might jump around a little bit and then have Alexis um, talk about some of the more MBA focused components because she has a lot more um, wisdom on these than I, but um, I will talk a little bit about the letters of recommendation as they are kind of special. Um, there are two required letters of recommendations. One is from a professional source and one is for, uh, from a technical source. And so um, that technical letter of recommendation is someone who um, can speak to with examples of some of your work that you've done, um, you know, using analytical skills, your technical acumen, how you solve problems um, through that quantitative lens. And so um, if you're not too far out of undergrad, maybe you know, three or four years out, you could consider asking a professor as long as they can provide those details, examples, other people to consider asking, you know, if, if you're working and um, want to have a professional source as a chief engineer, maybe a data scientist, um, someone from those perspectives. Um, and then the professional re recommender is someone who can speak to you know, your leadership potential, who you are as a teammate, um, giving examples of, um, of who you are as a future business leader, um, usually from a, a current or former direct supervisor or other senior manager. Um, we do require the two, but also encourage a third technical letter. If you have another source of someone who can provide more of those technical examples, we encourage you to add them if you can. Um, there will be no negative inferences if you don't submit that third letter. It will just be factored in to, with the rest of your application components if it is included. Um, it is often useful for the engineering departments in particular to um, glean more of your technical acumen if you have that additional letter, if possible. Um, the statement of purpose I'll touch on, and then Alexis, I'll pass it to you. Um, is something that it's a 300 word, uh, you know, short essay, if you want to call it a short response, um, asking about your interest within um, the engineering department that you select in your application, because you can only pick one department to be considered for. And um, so this is an opportunity to share more specifics about, you know, why it is interesting to you, how it can relate to your research interests or future career goals. Um, any partner companies whose focus in, in those areas you'd be excited to learn from, um, anything about the LGO program that ties into these departments, it's a chance for you to share more specifics. Um, think of it through the lens of you know, that engineering um, and technical side. Um, so Alexis, maybe I'll, I'll stop talking. I'm sure everyone's tired of hearing me. Let me pass it on to you. Sure, absolutely. I'm sorry about my computer shutting off before. I don't think I missed too much, but um, I'm happy to talk about maybe some of the MBA specific components. Um, so the LGO application, as Eileen mentioned, uh, it covers both MBA as well as LGO. So they will be considered by both the engineering department and LGO, as well as the Sloan admissions team. Um, and so the resume, the cover letter, um, your video statement and organizational chart, as well as your test scores and undergraduate transcripts um, are all considered by 
by um, the MIT MBA program um, when we're looking at your admission. So I guess first I'll talk maybe a little bit about the video statement. It is a video statement that's asking you to introduce yourself to your future classmates. It's a 60 second video where you're really just talking directly to the camera, um, no editing. You don't, you don't need to be a, a film student to do a really great 60 second video. Um, it can be as simple as sitting in front of a webcam like I'm doing right now. Um, you could be outside, you can be more creative. It's totally up to you. We just ask that there's no background noise, no subtitles, um, background, no background music as well. Um, and we're just, you know, looking for you to introduce yourself to your future classmates. The video will actually never be seen by your future classmates. It's only seen by the admissions committee, but it's a really great way for you to give us some more information that we can't glean from your resume or from your cover letter or that statement of purpose. So, you know, just thinking about all of the components individually to put together a really great story of who you are rather than using the same um, using different real estate to say the same thing over and over so that's the video statement the organizational chart is just an opportunity for you to visually show us where you fall within your organization or department um, and so you know if you we really want to see who you're working with on a daily basis. Show, so show us your peers, who you're reporting up to. If you have a direct line to someone, or, as well as an indirect line to someone, tell us who those folks are. Um, if you have any direct reports yourself or you're managing anyone, make sure that you include them on the organizational chart. In the event that any of your recommenders fall within your organizational chart, definitely highlight that so we can understand it a little bit better. It's not a requirement that they're on your organizational chart by any means, but certainly, um, you know, a lot of times it does, at least one might fall within um, your department. So the other thing about the organizational chart is you don't want it to be too detailed. So if you're working at a really large organization, um, you know, you might be focusing more on your department. So I, I like to give the Amazon example. It's very unlikely that Jeff Bezos is going to be on your organizational chart if you work at Amazon. I mean, in, in the event that you do work directly for Jeff, please absolutely include him. But um, it might be more likely that you're, you're reporting to someone a little bit lower down. Um, and that's who we really want to see. So that's the organizational chart there. Um, and then the last thing on Eileen's list here is the GMAT GRE. And then I would just add in maybe um, your transcripts as well, you know, all of your undergraduate um, information as well as graduate information. So if you've already attended a grad school or you've done a master's already, we'll want to see transcripts from all of those um, universities. And then for GMAT or GRE, um, if you're looking at the components from this year, you know that we did do the test waiver this year. We do not have a decision yet on what the requirements will be for next year. We are you know, conscious of how the pandemic is affecting different parts of the globe and whether or not people have access to an exam. So we are working very closely um, with GMAT to make sure that we understand that for the GMAT. But certainly if you have the ability to take a GMAT or a GRE, I would definitely encourage you to do so. We absolutely take the both in-person as well as the online version. Um, but you'll be able to check our website probably by midsummer. We'll have more information on what, what the specific requirements will be. Um, Eileen, is there anything else that you wanted me to specifically talk about on the application front? No, I think you've covered it all. Thank you, Alexis. Yeah, um, absolutely. Yeah, that's very helpful. So I think we can move forward in opening it up for everyone if there are some questions. Um, Sharona and I um, and Alexis are happy to kind of go through, we'll field some questions um, and, and kind of go through. So um, keep them coming too, if you have any, but let, let's see if we, uh, maybe Sharona, do you wanna start with the first one? Sure. Um, the first question we got was regarding tuition and how it works for LGO relative to the two degrees. So all LGO students just pay Sloan MBA tuition. So you're not paying for the additional degree, you're just paying for the MBA and then getting a second degree on top of it. So if you consider that with our fellowship, it's actually a very good deal financially. I would also add to we have um, sort of a cost breakdown um, for other you know additional expenses to keep in mind like food and housing um, things around some extracurricular costs so that can sort of help give you an idea too of the type of budget you would need for the you know the first year of study um, so thank you Sharona. Um, another question to um, average number of com company sponsored students and if they receive partial or full sponsorship. Um, it really varies year to year. I'd say we have at least, you know, maybe two to three um, candidates who are fully sponsored in the LGO program each year. Um, 
it, it depends on a, each candidate really on a case by case basis on the amount of sponsorship that they're receiving from a company and how much fellowship they would then receive. You know, we try and make sure that candidates are um, paying as little out of pocket as we can within the budget that we have available. Um, and so we, we try and make it work for everybody. Um, we have a lot of individual conversations with candidates who are sponsored or are potentially sponsored. So um, to try and make it work and um, figure out the, the right um, path and, and fellowship and, and you know managing finances. So um, definitely more of a case by case basis that you know we're happy to work with candidates on. Um, I saw something, let's see, here's a question for you, Alexis, too. It's a, it's a great question. We, we often get a lot. Um, oh, I think I might be taking it from you, Sharona, but um, if candidates aren't accepted to LGO, can they still be accepted to Sloan? Sorry, Sharona. <laughs> yes, absolutely. This happens every round, I would say. Um, there's a lot of times that LGO just doesn't have seats for everyone, but we really do believe that you'll make a great asset um, to the Sloan community and you'll be a great MBA student. So you are considered for both programs simultaneously. And even if um, you know LGO isn't able to offer you a seat, the MBA program may continue with your candidacy. If you do receive um, a final decision and you're not offered a seat, that does mean that they're, that both the MBA program as well as LGO has reviewed your, your candidacy. But a lot of times um, Sloan is able to, to take LGO applicants into just the MBA program. All right, um, I think I can do another question. Um, can you do your internship with a company outside of our partner companies? Generally, no. Um, all of our partner companies pay to be members and to be partner companies. And part of that membership is that they um, get to offer these internships to our students. So uh, we guarantee an internship. So if you are admitted to LGO and you come, you will be given one of these six month internships. Um, so it's a very different process than the traditional MBA where you're out searching for an internship through the LGO program office, you will be matched with one through our partner companies. Yeah, there's a special algorithm matching process of students completing a ranking and companies. So it's, you know, trying to optimize the best um, placement for every student. It's pretty neat. I think every student gets at least one of their first five choices, which is nice too. Um, another great question, if a direct supervisor is also a person that can speak about your technical abilities, how, how do you put them in a letter of recommendation? Um, what's handy about the form that your recommenders are filling out is that the technical questions are included, even on the letter that your, you know, professional source would um, be providing. And so um, if your recommender is someone who you're sort of categorizing as um, your direct supervisor could be that technical source, they can fill out those technical focused questions on the uh, template. Um, even if your professional recommender who you're not asking to give that technical um, perspective, if they wanted to, they could also fill out those questions. So it is an option available um, for either the technical or professional recommenders, um, if, if that is useful. I hope that helps. Um, okay, uh, Alexis, here's another question too. Um, for certificate coursework, is it possible to include screenshots, um, things provided by the company, coursework such as MITx or EDx in the application? Oh, sure. So there's actually a separate section in the application called relevant, relevant coursework, as well as non degree coursework, where you can upload information, um, you know, any additional certificates that you have done both professionally. So, I mean, if you have your CFA, you can tell us about it there. If you've taken any Coursera courses or edX courses, you can tell us about that as well as upload transcripts right into the application. And that, that will be considered alongside the rest of the materials when we're considering your candidacy. All right, so uh, I've seen these two questions come in and we do get them a lot, so I'll just answer them together. Um, the requirements for, or at least the qualifications that we're looking for in candidates um, tend to be the most general statements we can make are that we're looking for people who have extensive STEM backgrounds. So you don't necessarily need to have a STEM degree, um, but most of our students do, and it's quite rare that uh, we admit someone without a STEM degree, but if you have extensive STEM coursework, about equivalent to a degree, 
um, then you would be probably considered eligible depending on the engineering department that you're applying to. Um, so if you have questions about your transcripts, you're welcome to email us at lgo at, ed, at mit.edu and we can help kind of guide your engineering, uh, which engineering department you should apply to, and also just kind of gauging whether you have the background for that engineering department. Um, the other question is work experience. How much work experience are we looking for in candidates? Uh, on average, our students have five years, and we definitely like to see at least two years, two being on the very low end. Um, it's very, very rare that we would admit someone with less than two years. And I think that applications tend to become more competitive at the three year mark. So that's something to consider when you're thinking about the timeline of applying and when you can apply. Thanks, Sharona. Another question, um, if candidates are able to switch after starting school from one um, engineering department to another, um, the answer is unfortunately no, it is not an option. Um, and so once you've, once you've selected and if you've been admitted, um, that's the department that you'd be enrolling in. Um, the application and review process is completely separate from each department. And so um, candidates are who apply you know, for let's say mechanical engineering are only reviewed by the mechanical engineering department. Um, in very rare circumstances, sometimes the admissions committee will reach out to some candidates if they feel as though they'd be a more competitive candidate by being considered for a different department. Um, and we can facilitate that switch, talk about why, talk about research areas. Um, so we are always being on the lookout and mindful of candidates who might be in a better position to switch departments and we'll make that um, outreach proactively. Um, so hope that is useful as well. Um, so another question is about differences in, in the courses offered in LGO and Sloan MBA. Um, Maybe we can sort of tag team this, Alexis, of, you know, the summer is, um, and Sharona, please jump in. You're very well versed in the summer coursework for LGO. Um, there's some, it, there's like a Python training class. There's some leadership and operations focused coursework um, that you start with in June and some like some bonding um, coursework really to get to know your classmates and honing in on your leadership style. Um, so that's one thing to think about. Um, but then when you talk about, you know, when you think about the fall, you're starting your MBA core, or maybe Alexis, could you give a little overview of what the core looks like for MBA students? Sorry, trying to get off mute here. I was gonna drop the, the link into the chat. Let me just pull it up here um, so everyone can take a look. Um, I think you had it up on the screen earlier too. Yep, here we go. I'm just gonna put it in the chat. Um, no, I thought you had a spreadsheet. This thing? Yep. So you can kind of see the different courses that, are, that you'd be taking. I, I'm, so are they just looking, what was the question specifically, Eileen? I'm sorry, I'm not sure what I'm supposed to, what, um, what they're looking for us to share. Yeah, I think it just some of the, the key differences between the courses offered within LGO and Sloan MBA. Yeah, I mean, in terms of the core curriculum, you're doing um, your economic analysis um, course, your data models and decisions, communication for leaders, um, org processes, and then there's one other that I'm totally forgetting. Um, Oh, financial accounting, I think it is for MBA core. And so when you're in your core classes, I think I also saw a question come in and I mentioned it um, to someone in the chat that you actually are fully integrated into an MBA cohort. So it's not as though, you know, LGO students are in their, in a separate cohort, you will be in classes with other MB, other first year MBA students that are coming in. So you have the benefit as an LGO student of, you know, kind of already navigating the Sloan waters over the summer and, um, you know, the MBA students will be coming in at the end of August and then you'll be joining them in those courses. Um, happy to answer other questions, um, but that, that's what the core really looks like. Yeah, and I'll, I'll jump in just to add a bit more context to this um, slide. Mm -hmm. um, so the students, when they start in June, um, you know, certainly do a little bit of LGO orientation. And then once you start doing classes, it's quite intense. You're in classes every day from eight to three or four. Um, so the summer is quite intense and you're doing a mix of these business classes, um, some engineering classes like the probability and Python that Eileen mentioned. Um, some 
the, the mix of classes that you're doing during the summer um, kind of combined actually make, uh, exclude you from having to do the data models and decisions in the fall. Um, so LGOs will take all of the core classes except that class because you've already met that requirement through the LGO summer coursework. And most students will start taking engineering classes their first fall. So you'll have at least, you'll likely have at least one engineering class your first fall. So the intensity of the summer and kind of the blend of leadership, business and engineering really prepares you for that. So um, I know it can be very intimidating to think about two degrees from MIT, but the coursework is actually very manageable. Um, for most students, unless they start taking on more courses than we recommend they take on. Um, and most of the time, the time management comes down to what extracurriculars you want to participate in. So um, don't be too concerned about not managing the two degrees. Um, most of our, all, almost all of our students do. So we're very well uh, versed in putting students through the program and getting the two degrees at the very least. Thanks, Sharona. Really helpful um, additional context. And I think, uh, you know, if you join us for other in events, some upcoming virtual or in-person events, you'll be able to hear from our students directly and, and you'll get an idea of how everyone has their own flavor <laughs> of the LGO program and how, you know, they focus their time, sometimes more as a Sloney, sometimes more within their engineering department. Um, there's, there is a lot of flexibility in what you want to do with, you know, how much you want to focus on coursework versus extracurriculars and taking on leadership roles and that sort of thing. So um, very, um, very flexible, very um, customizable experience if that's what you're looking for. Um, so yeah, we've got just a couple more minutes and I apologize already. We're, we're just not going to get to everybody's questions, unfortunately. I'm trying to pull um, a couple of questions of, you know, maybe summarizing into one mega question of how does a candidate make their application stand out? What are some things we look for um, in an application? And, you know, I, I don't think I had mentioned, I feel like I say this a lot, but I forgot that the review process is quite holistic. So what that means is your application, there's not one component that is going to make or break your chances. Um, we really factor in everything. So for the questions around, you know, not hitting a certain test score um, or different years of work experience. You know, we're looking at that, but we're also looking at, you know, your, your accomplishments at work, responsibilities, what your recommenders are saying about you, um, your reasons for applying to the program and have you done your research, that sort of thing. Um, so maybe would, would it be kind of fun if um, Sharona and Alexis and I would give kind of three tips or things to help your application stand out? What do you think? All right, let's do it. Sounds like a blast. <laughs> All right. Um, why don't I, I'll, I'll jump in um, for the, the first thing to think about um, is um, to really talk about when you're putting your application together um, and organizing things. Um, there's a lot that's focused on your academics and professional experiences. So that one page resume, sometimes you get a question about how to fit it all in. And so think about that as um, an opportunity to sort of highlight your responsibilities, also your impact and you know, accomplishments within the companies that you've worked in. It, it does help to give a general timeline. Um, but if you can't fit all of that information you want to on your resume, use the work experience section of your application to add more detail and elaborate more about anything that you want the admissions committee to know about the work and the impact that you've had. Um, so just think about sort of spreading out the information thoughtfully to make sure that everything is included and it can be in different parts of the application. We're reading it all very closely. We're, we're all digesting it all. So I will stop and uh, pass it on. Maybe uh, Alexis, you wanna go next? Sure, happy to go next. I would say my biggest piece of advice um, well, I have two, but I'll, I'll share my, the second one after Sharona goes in case she doesn't use this one. But my, my second one probably is making sure that you read the instructions. So we have been really thoughtful on um, drafting the instructions and trying to put um, really thoughtful details on what we're looking for specifically to help you put together the best application. Um, and so, you know, making sure that you're reading what those instructions are and following them um, is really helpful for when we're reviewing your application, knowing that you are, you know, mindful of what we asked for, as well as putting, you know, helping to kind of guide, guide that holistic um, view and picture. So that's my second one. Sharona? Yeah, uh, my, my biggest piece of advice for uh, working on the application is that it's a pretty lean application. There's not a lot of space, but in the space you do have being very thoughtful of speaking to LGO as an integrated program, 
So, you know, we are unique in that we are a distinctive program. We do have our own culture and our own traditions and kind of the unique curriculum like the internship. Um, so being able to speak to your interest in LGO as both its own distinctive program, but also each of the distinctive degrees, which again can be difficult because you don't have a lot of words to do this, but to kind of laying out why you're interested in the Sloan MBA and the specific engineering degree that you're applying for, as well as the overall uh, umbrella of LGO just helps us understand where your interest is and whether it's a good fit on both sides. Yeah, I'll just say the last thing that I would say is be yourself. Don't try to be someone else. Be exactly who you are. Um, don't think that we're looking for one specific kind of cookie cutter candidate. Um, we are really excited to get to know you individually. And so make sure that you're being authentic to yourself. Fantastic advice. Thank you both. So if you're interested, you want to learn more, we definitely encourage you to check out uh, many more virtual events that we have throughout the next few months, more webinars around, you know, the internship, um, hearing from our current students, the um, engineering departments. We also have an in-person info session next month, June 16th on campus. So um, definitely check out our website. There's also going to be more information for folks interested in learning about um, early admission, MBA early admission, and how that is woven into the LGO program, what that process looks like. Um, so it's, it's a little bit different. So stay tuned and we'll have more uh, programming for, for folks interested in that as well. Um, thank you all. Thank you, Sharona, Alexis. Thank you, Rachel, everyone for joining today. Really appreciate your time. Um, please feel free to reach out to us with more specific questions you have. And we're happy to work with you, talk to you on the phone, whatever is convenient as you're learning more about LGO. Um, thanks for joining from all around the world. Um, take care. Bye-bye.